Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Cheryl and welcome to the virtual fair seminars brought to you by IDP Education this weekend, featuring our guest speakers and representatives from various universities in Australia who are experts on their fields on various topics. Uh, before I start this event, I'll just like to touch on some housekeeping matters. We're recording the session today and also broadcasting it live to our Facebook page so you can engage with us on that platform as well. Um, each seminar is scheduled for 30 minutes each, uh, with 20 minutes for the presentation and 10 minutes for Q&A. Speakers do assist us to wrap up each session promptly, so the next seminar can begin on time. Uh, when playing video, uh, if you have any videos to share, please select connect to computer sound so we will hear you. Uh, students, during this session, we'll love to have as many of your questions as possible, so please feel free to use the Q&A button below on your screen and ask away. Uh, we also like you to also log in or to rename yourself to the name that you've registered with so we can identify you correctly. Uh, should we not get to answer all your questions because of the limited time, we strongly advise you re-enter the main virtual fair over at the link, uh, which I'll put in the chat, and our academics will return to their virtual breakout rooms where you can chat with them there. Uh, alternatively, please feel free to contact us at the details below on the screen and our team of education counselors will get those answers to you. Uh, you will also be contacted after the virtual fair as well, if you have registered, so don't worry about that. Uh, remember to stay tuned at the end of our program for any key links as to how to stay connected as well. Okay, uh, now let me begin with a quick introduction to IDP. IDP is a global leader in international education services. Our success comes from connecting students with the right course in the right institution and the right country by providing them with neutral, objective education advice directly from universities. Now, IDP is co-owned and founded by universities, and since then, we have been the official representatives of over 700 institutions now across five study destinations in Australia, New Zealand, UK, Canada, and Ireland. Now, we've been operating for over 50 years now, creating a huge network of opportunity in over 100 offices in over 30 countries. IDP is also the proud co-owner of IELTS, the world's most popular English language test and operator of nine English language teaching campuses in Southeast Asia. Now, when you contact IDP, uh, you'll be met with our team of friendly advisors who can help you by providing free education counseling that's impartial and objective. We're essentially a one-stop service for students beginning with the exploration and application stage all the way to the point of departure. And our unrivaled experience and technology will help you weigh your options and assess, uh, assess your choices to make sure you're picking what's best for you and your future. Because we are founded by universities and also official representatives, we do have the delegation to waive many application fees and establish direct contact with admissions teams. So we can help with application processing, expediting certain outcomes, uh, troubleshooting things that might come in in the, in the communication between you and admissions. Um, and we can help to link you up with university personnel, academics, and coordinate any interviews and auditions in country when necessary. Now, IDP also provides exclusive onshore support because we actually have onshore officers in your study destination. So we prepare you before you go and we can continue to service you in your study destination after you arrive. Now, to repeat, all our services are free and we handle every aspect of your educational journey until you enroll. So in addition to helping you with your university matters from start to end, your counsellor will also help you coordinate a whole host of auxiliary services that you might need as an international student, um, including your accommodation, your visas, your healthcare insurance, uh, with many exclu IDP exclusive benefits like student discount cards. Um, I strongly advise you pick up one of our student journey brochures from our ed uh, education counsellors, which will help to simplify the entire journey for you. Okay. Uh, lastly, at IDP, we are also at the forefront of technological innovation within the education industry. Uh, so we would like to also um, excited. We are so excited to announce our new IDP Study Abroad app. Uh, this free IDP St Study Abroad app provides you with everything you need to prepare your overseas education 
um, journey. You'll be able to search for courses from over 650 institutions, track your university applications and get advice from our counsellors all through the app. So download that now and get started on your first leg of your overseas education journey. Okay. We're also uh, widely present on all social media. So follow and like us on these platforms to keep in touch with more cool events that we'll be organizing throughout the year like this one, okay? We'll hope to also see you uh, in our offices at the cafe or in the virtual space after this weekend. So hop on to our IDP Singapore website to meet us at our virtual counseling service anytime. Uh, in light of the current COVID situation, we've created a unique offering to allow you to connect with us virtually so you can stay at home be safe and enjoy the full suite of student placement services and support. So visit a link shared on the slide to book an appointment with our counsellors. Um, it operates from 10.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. from Mondays to Fridays and 10 to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Okay. Now, without further ado, I'll hand this time to our first speaker, um, Mr. Sarah Vanan uh, Nagarathinam, who is the International Manager at University of Wollongong, We'll be speaking to us about you and AI and our future. Okay. Thank you. Sarah Ben, are you there? All right. Super. Yes. Thank you so Sarah. much thank you for the nice introduction about the IDP and the background of the IDP and the kind of support services, what IDP provides to the potential students and as well as the holistic information about the student life journey, what they can take. Um, and I'm just going to share my screen. Um, okay, um, as Cheryl introduced me, my name is Sarvanan Nagarathan, I'm known as Sarah in my office, and I work as an international manager looking after the South Asian, Southeast Asian markets, including the Singapore. Um, I exclusively work for the Faculty of Engineering and Information Sciences here at the University of Wollongong. Um, today, I'm going to take about the value add session, um, particularly focusing on you on AI, the artificial intelligence, and our future. How um, the AI provides supports in our day-to-day -day life and how we contributes to the community and what kind of aspects we could use, some of the aspects we could utilize from the AI to make our life better in now and as well as in the future. Okay, uh, particularly I'm mainly focusing on the because we are all going through the pandemic at the moment and the COVID has changed most of our life and uh, we are all kind of settling into the new normal and uh, how the AI will help in settling in the post-COVID um, world and um, uh, how the post-COVID world uh, looks like. <clears throat> it needs, uh, because um, as uh, Bernard Mark uh, mentioned on April 26, 2020, um, what we need is an adaptability and flexibility is the most uh, important uh, aspects in the post-COVID world. And tech savviness will play a major role in dealing with the current situation as well as in the post-COVID world. When I said the tech savviness, it's more of the AI, the artificial intelligence, big data, IoT, Internet of Things, uh, VR and AR, which is the virtual reality and augmented reality, et cetera. We need a creativity and innovation to make new things to, uh, to respond the way we are responding to, um, to, sorry, to respond in a better way uh, than the current situation. And as well as uh, the data literacy, because uh, the amount of data we collect into nowadays is enormous, but uh, how we're going to deal with those data and how we're going to interpret this data into the study mapping is the most important aspect. And uh, the critical thinking, uh, because uh, uh, we have the data, okay, and uh, we need to apply the critical thinking to study the data and understand the data in the correct manner to make a wise decision. And here comes with the, we use the uh, some of the AI aspects in um, studying those data to convert into the decision making aspects. 
and of course uh, the digital and the coding skills and leadership is uh, one of the main aspects because to drive the uh, future to achieve the targeted goals and of course uh, the emotional intelligence what we will be going through and as a human um, we need to know how to control the emotional intelligence and perhaps that's where the AI comes in place and uh, uh, to monitor and volumize and control the um, emotional intelligence aspects. What is um, artificial intelligence? Okay, the AI is nothing but we make computers to think in the full and literal sense. Um, and of course, the computers cannot replace the human brain. Um, there's no way to do that, but at least uh, some of the human brain aspects we can transfer to the computer and uh, ask them to think to produce the better results and outcome. Um, so you can also realize that by doing the right programming and giving the right direction, we can uh, make the computers to perceive, reason, plan, and act accordingly. Okay. What are the main components we impute to the computer is the problem solving and uh, the knowledge presentation, reason and planning, because when I said reasoning and planning is based on the data, what it collects and how it interprets the data and as well as the communications, the, the right amount of data, it, 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 it narrowed down to the funnels to the information what we need and how the way it communicate, communicate to us, it's the most important aspects. And then the perception that's that's known as the computer vision, the, the, the output of the data uh, in terms of the human reading aspects, that's called because the computer vision. And then of course the robotic aspects to act um, based on our comment um, to the certain, um, uh, to produce the certain, um, areas of results, what we look for. Uh, yeah, that's most um, uh, the last step of the acting. <clears throat> and if we take an example of um, COVID situation and, and let's take a COVID and ask plus the AI and what AI can do into the COVID world, uh, how the AI is uh, making uh, the COVID situation much better, how it helped uh, in the beginning of the COVID and as well as uh, because uh, when the COVID has began, uh, it's new to the most of the community and we don't know where to start and how to deal the situation and the later on once the things get be, uh, known the better understanding and then slowly we started using the AI to, to make the situation much better. Um, it's a, if you can see in an image, the second image, because um, the um, the x-rays uh, that's where the most um, important the first step when, when someone has the COVID symptoms they went to the hospital and then an x-ray was the first step they, they took um, to understand the issues in the lung and uh, space and uh, if you can see the left hand side of the image it's a black and white and the right hand side is the is a more of a color importer that's the use in an AI to introduce, to study the image, to determine the situation of the particular patient. Uh, otherwise, they need to go to the multiple tests where there's uh, no time to do that. And the hospitals were in full capacity. And, um, and really AI as the machine itself, um, we feed the program to study, to produce the results within a minute of matter. And again, um, if you look at the, the image below that uh, OPC medium, uh, the new technology um, they introduced by that particular Hoopsie Media is to study the human face even uh, when you are wearing the mask because the mask is an important component nowadays and you cannot avoid mask, for example, on the secu high security area, uh, like a defense um, secure area, the ministry area, and a simple thing like an airport uh, because it's a highly secured area and uh, again, it's a high risk. Uh, for the virus contagious and the mask is an important element, but again, how do you recognize the face? Um, in the most advanced airports, um, it's, uh, AI will do the screening process and that's how the new technology, the hopes in media, the protein to recognize the face. It's all used with artificial intelligence. And again, um, I'm not sure how 
many uh, countries uh, use this uh, technology that uh, social distancing, uh, measuring the social distancing. And initially, when the pandemic was at the peak of height, some countries were seriously thought to introduce this and to find the people, those who are not abiding the social distancing measures. And again, how they, they've used the algorithms to determine the distance between the one per human, second human, and then they use the face reading caption the technology to identify the person. And then they, it used to send the find directly to the person saying that so and so, so like a traffic fine, um, like a traffic violation, it's a social distancing violation. Okay. And uh, we, we saw what the AI could do in the real world using as a pandemic as an example. And uh, if you similar think, what do we teach uh, for AI here at the University of Wollongong? Okay. Um, uh, focusing on the artificial intelligence where we teach the machine learning algorithms and applications is the first major step uh, because that's a basic uh, study um, you need to encounter and to understand the AI and uh, as well as the computer vision algorithm systems, computational intelligence, programming skills, and uh, we, uh, virtual and augmented reality that used the game development field, for example, and uh, the big data analytics and management to study the data, how you're going to analyze the data and how you will be managing that data to uh, perception and planning to read the data and to produce the outcome what you need. Uh, because uh, in nowadays, for example, the last 10 years, so the amount of data what we produce and as well as the amount of data what we capture has grown up by more than 1,000 percentage. That's a study says. And we have the data, but the, the intelligent is uh, how do you interpret and read the data. And uh, towards the end of your study, no matter whether you study Bachelor of Computer Science or Bachelor of IT or even a Master of Computer Science, uh, we all you, you, you will have an opportunity to do a capstone projects and during the first two years of study, whatever their field uh, you're interested in narrow down, you could focus on doing those particular capstone projects and then you can take it to the local industry and ask the international platform to um, to upskill your knowledge on a particular uh, capstone project what you've done here at the University of Oloban. And uh, <clears throat> What do we currently research um, here in the um, uh, University of Wollongong, Kong in particularly AI aspect? Um, we have uh, Institute of Cybersecurity and Cryptology um, because uh, security is the biggest threat. Um, the more we move into the uh, um, IT platform or let's say um, the technological platform, uh, again, uh, it, it also comes with a threat and how to deal with the threat. Um, it, it needs a deeper understanding and learning because we need to think about putting ourselves in the um, criminal, uh, white color criminal, I should say, uh, on their uh, shoes to understand what will be their moves and how to avoid that. And so we have a world-class leading um, institute called um, Cybersecurity and Cryptology. Um, and um, you will have an opportunity to um, study some of the aspects from that institute and again um, the um, strategies for emergency management um, in, in utilizing the intelligent agent and as well as um, we can see in the machine learning research is one of the other key component what we are focusing at the moment. Um, of course, uh, we are embracing a new world, uh, that's a digital world, um, say AI, big data, moving towards 5G and uh, becoming more tech savvy to make us more powerful for the future world. And uh, by having all of this, of course, the future is in your hands. Okay, let's start this fascinating journey from the University of Wollongong and I will, um, next few slides, I will take you through what are the options uh, we have here at the University of Wollongong. A bit of background about the University of Wollongong and uh, we are number one university um, overall in New South Wales and ACT as um, given by the rankings. 
by the undergraduate federal government quality indicator ranking. And as well as we are top 20 in the world for this, um, we are ranked actually 16th the best modern university in the world. And uh, we are second in Australia for graduate employee satisfaction. Uh, the bit of stats about the University of Bulungong, we have 35,000 students um, enrolled in both the onshore and offshore campuses, and we have campuses in um, different countries, and uh, the, the main campus is in Bulungong, and also we have a campus in Sydney, two campuses in Sydney, and then the remote campuses in the region of Australia, uh, that puts us in nine Australian campuses and four international campuses. And this is the Wollongong city, those who uh, were not uh, been to Australia and those um, who don't know where the Wollongong is, uh, we are close to Sydney. Uh, Sydney is the closest airport. It's a 90 minutes by train or by drive from the Sydney uh, CBD or Sydney airport to the University of Wollongong or the Wollongong city. It, it, we, it's a beach city. And I think that the beach lifestyle is the city's lifestyle. It's a kind of a holiday destination from people from across Australia do visit the Wollongong. And what of the beach you are seeing in the image is just a five minutes drive from the university main campus. And uh, if you look at this specific engineering and technology rankings, uh, we are top 100 in the world or 92nd worldwide and uh, 60 in Australia and third in New South Wales. Uh, it's uh, based on the latest time side education world university rankings by subject. And if we look at the particular computer science and information systems, we are top 200 in the world by QS ranking. And uh, given the AI, what we talked, and if you look at uh, the degrees, what we can do um, in order to upskill your knowledge in the AI as well, so even the IT or computer science background, uh, we offer um, three-year undergraduate degree called Bachelor of Computer Science with a six different majors you have. First year is a common year and common entry, and then you can choose your major from second year onwards. So for example, AI or big data or cybersecurity or digital system security and game and mobile development or the traditional software engineering. If, if you look at the bit of the combination, the technology platform and as well as the programming platform, then you can do the BIT, Bachelor of Information Technology, with the focus on e-business or web design development or the network design management. And we also have uh, different options for the postgraduate students, or you can start your EG and then you can articulate to the postgrad later on, or uh, you can do your uh, undergraduate in Singapore or other country, and then you can uh, articulate to do a postgraduate later on. What we offer here is a Master of Computer Science uh, with the majors in machine learning and big data or network and information security or software engineering. The standard duration is two years, but with the credit option, we can reduce the degree to 1.5 years or even uh, in certain cases, you can even reduce to up to one year. Um, sorry. The last few slides, um, I would just like to share the, some of the strong industry links and industry connections, what we have. Um, you can see in the image, um, we, have, we do have a strong industry connection from Microsoft, Snowy Hydro, or Adobe, Baidu, or IBM, or even the Facebook, Google. Uh, because this is the knowledge share you, we get from the industry and that transforms to, um, um, to the research projects as well. And some of the extracurricular opportunities uh, when you enroll, it's, um, for example, we have uh, women in STEM for the women students or the motorsports for the uh, like-minded students to participate in the F1 formula races. And uh, the WIPS is a Wollongong Information Technology Society or Wollongong Computer Society where you can participate and they can showcase your talents and to learn um, from the um, industry leaders. Thank you so much and for listening. And now the room opens for the, any questions you may have. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And just I'm jumping into the chat section to see if there's any um, questions. Over to you, um, Cheryl.
Hi, Saravan, and thank you so much for that comprehensive overview. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm checking I'm the Q&A as well for any questions on our Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. We don't have any at the moment. Maybe we'll just wait a couple of minutes. In the meantime, you were saying that because of the COVID situation, what's it like over there now with uh, Wollongong? Um, like well, school, the life well? is pretty normal, actually, um, to be honest. Um, there's no new cases and um, there's no much restrictions in Wollongong or in, or in Sydney. Um, universities are open uh, like back to normal. Uh, but when it comes to learning, uh, we offer a dual learning, face-to-face uh, -face as well as the um, online learning because the students, those who are based in overseas, they're unable to come to the campus. So that's why in the same classroom that we, where you can see the students attending, those are on show. And th that same class is also live streamed so that um, outside of Australia, these students based in Australia, Australia can attend the classes uh, on a live mode. It's a dual learning. Right, I understand. Yeah. And this one's held in the main campus, right? The I programs, are they all? Uh, yes, uh, these, these programs are delivered in the uh, main campus and as well as in one of our Sydney campus that's in, based in Liverpool. Um, that's one of the Western Sydney suburb, most uh, fastest growing suburb in Sydney, if you look at the stats. And uh, the both, both the Bachelor of Computer Science and as well as Master of Computer Science are available in um, Sydney campus as well. Right. Thank you so much for the COVID, for the, the, the update on the COVID situation, <laughs> where, where you are. Always appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I hope the situation in Singapore is under control right now. And Although there's a border restrictions are in place uh, for the better reason, <laughs> but uh, yeah, within that, uh, I, I do see um, the situation is very well contained uh, at the moment. Understand? Yes, yeah. it, it's actually it's been quite good over here. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it's well over there as well. And for the students who've just joined us, um, maybe like you'd like to share as well, Sarah Venon, the fact that they start virtual studies with us. They are doing in virtual studies will count towards um, any post-study work. Uh, That's true. Yeah? I mean, as long as the student holds a valid visa uh, during their yeah. uh, um, remote study learning, that counts mm -hmm. towards the post-study work rights visa. That's the confirmation given by the government. And as well as, uh, as a, from a university point of view, we, we understand and appreciate the difficulties the online students go through. So that's why we provide 10% additional scholarship for the remote learning on top of the what are the scholarship the students is getting. For example, for undergraduate students, we offer up to 30% scholarship for the eligible mm. students. Mm. There's a different requirement to meet that. On top of 30%, uh, they also get 10% additional scholarship because they're going through the remote learning. It's, it's just the remote just learning. Clarify if that's a university, is that 30% scholarship, a university wide scholarship, or is it just for your faculty? Uh, it's a university-wide scholarship, but it's not available for every course and uh, okay. for different course. And mm -hmm. um, for the IT, the Bachelor of Computer Science and Bachelor of IT and Bachelor of Engineering, yes, they are eligible for the business scholarship. And mm -hmm. some of the business programs also, they do offer up to 30 business scholarships. Fantastic. Yeah. And in order to get that scholarship information, they will have that at a time of their application, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Would it require a separate application? No, no. Automatic. No. Yeah, it's because it's based on an academic performance um, uh, merit. qualification, so it will be assessed automatically and uh, the scholarship will be included in the offer letter. And so, over and above that 30%, there will be additional scholarships. Yeah, consider in light of the COVID situation. Thank you so much, Sarah. And that's really interesting. Um, I also realized we do have a question now in our QA. Uh, it says from Mr. Siva A, how many years is the degree? So I think you've already flashed this one. Maybe you could flash your slide again on the uh, three year, uh, Bachelor of um, Computer Science is three years and the Master of Computer Science is two years. That's a standard duration. But if any students articulating from the polytechnic background uh, uh, from uh, any of the Singapore polytechnics and mm. The application on a case by case basis, and they are eligible to, uh, to receive credit for up to one year. Credit for up to one year. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much. 
All right, just to just for anyone who has missed that, um, take note that UOW uh, University of Wollongong has fantastic financial assistance, thirty percent scholarships for many programs. Mm -hmm. At the time of your application, you'll be automatically assessed. You will not need to do a separate application. Yes, correct. Sure, that's correct. Right, and they have plenty of industry placements as well that are that they can coordinate or have embedded in their program. Yeah. Yes, that's true. I think yeah, that's yeah. the key message here. Thank you so much, Sarah Vernon. Really yeah. hope to see you back. And if you all have any other questions that you're thinking of, you can hop back into our virtual fair and then. Um, yeah, you can uh, hop back to our virtual fair, the link that we put in your chat, and then uh, he can ask, he, you know, he can answer those questions there. That's true. Question, if any particular uh, question from the students, so please feel free to send an email or share the student contact list with me, and I will contact them directly. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. A question Good. now that says, what is the difference between applying directly to UOW versus SIM UOW? Uh, would I, I I do see that we are a bit short on time. Mm -hmm. Do uh, quickly answer this question, or would you like to a quick quick answer? Both yeah. students receive the same degree. Uh, one is the one you study in the local institution in SIM, and the directly coming to UW. That means you you come to Australia to to study in the bigger campus. But uh, doing a degree in SIM is also the same curriculum, same um, degree awarded from the University of Wollongong and some of the lecturer from Wollongong travel to SAM. But again, uh, you cannot compare the student life experience uh, being studying in the local institute and then studying in Australian campus. So that's the decision the student has to make. Yes, and, and if you missed the part that we spoke about earlier, if you start virtual studies with uh, UOW Online Australia, um, having like, you know, applied for a proper visa, that duration that you spend in virtual studies will be counted towards post-study work rights and you'll be eligible to apply later on to start to yeah. study after your degree, yes? Okay, yeah. fantastic. We now have another question, but I think we could get quite um, specific. Siva, maybe I would like to direct you to our virtual fair so you can meet with Mr. Saravanen, one on one. All right. Yeah. Or you can you can meet my colleague, uh, Miss Ling. Um, she's doing the virtual fair, and she'll be most happy to answer any of the questions. Yes. So uh, come to us with your name of your diploma and your current GPA, uh, and we'll be able to advise on whether or not you've met eligibility. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah, you so much, awesome. Sivan. Thank you so much, Saravanen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Saturday. Thank, Thank you. you. And have a good day. You too. Okay. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, now uh, without further ado, I'd like to actually... Uh